passage for this evening. I hope as we read this, patapak siya sa isip natin, and as we leave this place, uh, we can remember ano ba yung pwede nating ma-pick up for this evening. So, uh, our key verse is found in 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. Okay? So, uh, can we all read this together? Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obey the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. Okay? So, Ang discussion natin will revolve around the book of uh, 1 Samuel. Um, since everyone has been distributed in the Bible, can we all turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 15? We'll, do, we'll read through it. Tapos dahan-dahan as we read through the verses, we extract kung ano ba po pwede natin mag magpulot. Okay? Maybe let's read together 1 Samuel 15, verse 1 to 3. Okay? Let's all start together reading. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go and attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them, but put to death men and women, children, infants, cattle and sheep, camel and donkeys. Okay? So let's stop for a moment here to reflect. So here, here God is talking to uh, 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 Samuel and Samuel talking to Saul. And Saul was being asked, sabi niya, I want you, being the king, to annihilate uh, all the people of Amalekites so totally destroy everything that belongs to them. As a background, chapter 15, merong um, previous command na ginawa rin si God na test. No? So, actually, this is a second test already for Saul. Okay? If you want to know more, I hope you can read through more of the scripture. But, ang um, chapter 15, second test na ni Saul. Ang first test niya came from chapter 12. So, again, we mentioned it is uh, uh, good for us to be able to understand the whole context kung maiintindihan natin yung background. Okay? So, ang background ng chapter 15, since sabi ko nga it's a second test, yung first Samuel chapter 12, this is yung original na first test na ginawa ni God kay Samuel. So, siguro, backtrack tayo konti go, fast forward ng tayo ng konti sa verse 6. Okay? So, let's read. Now, when the men of Israel saw that their situation was critical and that their enemy was hard-pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits and cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed Jordan the land of God and believed so. Saul remained at Gilgal and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel. So, seven days siya nagantay. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal. So, inaantay na ng mga troops ni Samuel. And ni Saul si Samuel. Eh, hindi lumabas for seven days. And Saul's men began to scatter. So, so he said, sino nagsasalita nito? Si Saul. Bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. And just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, When I saw that the men were scattering, and that you did not come at the set time, and that the Philistines were assembling at Mikmash, I thought that the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offerings. Verse 13, you acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, He would have established your kingdom over Israel for all the time. But now your kingdom will not endure in the lots. And the Lord sought an out man after His own heart and appointed him leader of His people because you have not kept the Lord's command. So, as an overview, medyo mahaba-haba siya, but what can we learn? 
So, may kera. As, as they were waiting, ang instruction ni Samuel, antay muna kayo sa akin. Let's consult God. But what happened? After seven days, sobrang tagal na, and malapit na yung palaban, and lahat ng tao na nanginig na sa tao, and they were just waiting. Anong gagawin natin? Alam nga naman, nakaantay lang tayo dito. So what did uh, Saul do? What he did, sabi niya, akin na yung burnt offering, ako na ang magiging priest. Ako na ang mag-o-offer ng sacrifices. What's wrong here? Ano kaya sa tingin natin yung problem with regards to this situation? Can the king do the priestly roles? Hindi, no? Parang sa atin, meron yung uh, role of each leaders. So some are called to be political leaders, while some are called to be spiritual leaders. But the problem is, as Samuel asked Saul to wait, siya hindi na nakaantay. Bakit? Because, if you will look at it, our topic is about religion and relationship. To us, feeling natin, basta kailangan, parang let's say, I need the Lord for us to bless our wedding. Sampo lang ah. I know, most of us are Chinese, no? For, for the Lord to bless our wedding day and the wedding relationship, siguro lang yung kuhaan din siya. Ha? Tradisyon ako. Kaya, para maging successful lang gawa ng bahay, lang boy ako, kuhaan mo, so it's it. Di ba? And this is practically like a religion. Di ba? Because we want something, we want to do something so that we can obtain one thing. Di ba? Hindi yung Kasi this is the problem between religion and relationship. Okay? Religion, meron tayong gagawin para may makuha tayo. So we have to do something in order to merit something. You get what I mean? An example here, to Saul, ang isip niya, kailangan yung sacrifice will be tantamang to reward. Para sa kanya. So kailangan makapag-offer ako. E what if hindi ako nag-offer? Bakit hindi ako manalo? But Samuel said, wait. Diba? So, most of us, ganyan. We think we have to do something in order for us to win God's favor. But in reality, we have to wait on God. Now, the relationship is different from religion because religion, we have to wait on God. It's not what we want, but it's what God wants. Hindi tayo yung genie na we do something for God so that He will obey to our whims. Baliktad, we are the ones submitting to God. That's the difference. So in this instance, kaya lang ako nag-backward para maintindihan natin, aha, si Saul pala was already given a second chance. So previously, tinest na ni Lord si Saul. And this time, balik tayo, chapter 15. So chapter 12, chapter 13, medyo na-test na siya. And si Saul was really just after a religion. But he really never encountered God in the first place. So, balik tayo, chapter 15. Anong command ni God kay Saul? Anong command? Totally anihilig. As in, pati hayo, pati bata, pati babae, patayin. Some of us would think, bakit napaka-harsh naman ang command ni God kay Saul? You know, you see? And not only that, Ang iisipin ko, yun yung first question ko when I read this. Second question ko, when someone mentioned to Saul, I already removed favor from you. But why is it, ang next na question ko, why is it that God will use Saul again and give favor to him when in fact, his presence already departed from Saul? Right? So this is what we can learn here. There are times God would use Sometimes kasi akala natin, nagkaroon lang tayo ng blessing, di ba? We discussed previous session. There are times where evil will prosper. Di ba? And this is only for the purpose that God will deliver judgment. And on this purpose, I think uh, what God wants to happen is that um, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waited them, when they came up upon Egypt. Aha! Now we got the answer. There are times, it may pretty seem be harsh, 
But if you would look at it, matagal na pala yung kasalanan ng Amalekites. It just so happened that this is just the right time na sobrang sama na nila that God has to really totally annihilate all the people. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah, where in sobrang sama na ng tao, kailangan i-exterminate na. So in reality, was God really harsh? I don't think so. God was just giving them patient time. Diba? You remember 2 Peter when we discussed before? Don't count the Lord's slowness as being slow. But it is only for God to give us more time to repent. Diba? So that is the lesson that we can partly get. Why the, the command might be harsh and at the same time, why is God using soul again? Eh, soul, yeah. Soul again for this purpose. But, it is also probably God is giving him second chance. We do not know. But, it is it is a fact that God is giving him another command. So, let's move on. Verse 4. So, Saul, check natin kung sinunod ni Saul lang. So, Saul summoned the men and mustered them at the lake. 200 foot soldiers and uh, 10,000 men from Judah, so so went to the city and set an ambush in Rabid, and so on. And so, verse 7, So attacked the Amalekites all the way from Avila to Shur, the east of Egypt, and he took Aga, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But, ito yun, verse 8, and verse 9, But Saul and the army spared Aga and the best of the sheep and cattle and the fat calves and lambs and everything that was good they spared. These, they were unwilling to destroy completely but everything that was despised that was um, uh, and weak they totally destroyed. Okay? So what can we see here? Did, did, did Samuel totally obey God? I don't think so. Actually, ang ginawa niya, iniwan niya yung mga good part na hindi niya sinunod. Okay? So, ang, ang, ang tanong natin dito, minsan, tayo rin, as Christians, minsan ang kalaban ng good, ng getting our best, is actually not the bad, but it's actually the good things. You remember what we spoke before? Yung, um, ano nga ba yung topic natin? Yung, um, delayed gratification na alala nyo, most of the time, ang kalaban ng best is not the bad, but the good. Eh, ang problema, it is so hard na so kung i-obey si God because, parang Lord, ang ganda naman na itong mga uh, sheep na to. Why won't we just spare some total? Pwede natin pakinabangan to, di ba? And I guess, yan rin yung nagiging struggle natin as Christians. God will command us something. Lord, I'll give an example, a live example. I have a friend, no? And this friend of mine was a Christian. I, 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 I have been counseling him, no? The problem is, sabi niya, you know, bro, ang hirap sundin eh. May namit ako isang girl. Ano mo itong girl na ito? Napaka-okay. Ano, click talaga kami. Ano mo, no, only problem lang, bro? Ano? Ah, hindi, Christian eh. Ano ba yan, bro? Nakakahinayang. Uh, Sabi ko, bro, what does the Lord command you? Kari, ewan ko. Mag-pray na lang natin. Siguro, I think God would allow me to offer sacrifice. Kari, gano'n, no? Missionary dating na lang. Gano'n ang example natin as Christian. So, I hope when we when we surrender our life to Christ, guys, listen. When when we surrender our life to Christ, hindi po pwede yung um, parang kung ano lang yung okay, yun lang ang susundin. Parang buffet. Lord, eh, ito eh, hindi po hindi okay. Hindi po gagawin. Ang problem kasi is we don't trust God enough that He will provide us the best. Yun kasi yun. When God tested Abraham to offer Isaac, Isaac was God's best for Abraham, right? And you remember, he was the promise. But God has to ask Abraham to surrender. And 
pang ilang test na ni Abraham to? I think this was also a second test or a se one of those tests that God gave because on previous when Abraham was being tested by the Lord, at some instance, nag, nag fail rin siya, di ba? In this point, parang ganun rin tinesting ulit ni Saul, ni, ni God si Saul. Sige na, tingnan nga natin kung isosurrender mo to. And on this part, the same way, Saul failed because he did not obey. But Abraham passed the test because he was able to surrender his best so that eventually God has to provide the way so that he can get back ulit yung provision for the sacrifice. Okay? This is something that we can learn. Okay, let's move on. Verse 7. Then, um, Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havila to Shur to the east of Egypt. He took a God, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed. The fat calves, lambs, and everything that was good, these they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything... Sorry. Verse 10, And the word of the Lord came to Samuel. Dito ang tayo, verse 10. I am grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instruction. Samuel was troubled and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Okay? Um, pansin niyo yung heart ni Saul and ni Samuel. No? Imagine, para siyang spiritual leader ni Samuel and ni Saul. Eh. And look at the love of Samuel to Saul. Imagine mo nagkasala. Instead, he grieved for him. You know, I can relate. There are times we, we will have someone whom we are discipling and I hope eventually if some of us have not been discipling others, we will have this privilege to disciple others and show this love and concern. No? He was not only there to give him spiritual advice. He was really there to care for him. Hindi lang yung for the sake of obligation mo kasi as leader to take care of Soul, eh. but he is really concerned about Saul's welfare and he grieved. And I think part of those is matagal na rin yung relationship ni Saul sa kani Samuel. I think ang um, relationship nila spanned for like 70 years. If I'm not mistaken, if I, if I check the commentary. And one of those reasons probably was that it break Saul's heart, eh, Samuel's heart to see ano ba naman yan? Saul was being chosen by God, but instead of being the right leader for the people, you know, he wasn't really a good example to them. That's why he was grieved at that instance. And uh, he grieved, ito, I, 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 I can find three things. He sympathized with God. The first thing probably that I saw also is that he sympathized with God. Kasi si God, malaki ang tiwala na kay Saul. In fact, binigyan na nga niya ng second chance si Saul. And yet, balikutin sa kasalanan. Pinagalitan na nga ni Samuel si Saul. Diba? And yet, ganyan na naman siya. So I would think, why probably Samuel was grieved is he sympathized with God. Second, he is grieved with Saul perhaps because he loved him or he learned to love him along the way. I mentioned that already. And the third is he also grieved perhaps because he understood Israel's predicament that Israel is not able to experience greatness because of their leaders. And I believe ganun din tayo. That's why all of us need to pray for our leaders. Because most of us are suffering also for the fault of our leaders. And damay yung Israel because of the fault of Samuel, eh, Saul. So, I think um, very valid yung concerns ng pag-grief is Samuel, no? Let's move on. Uh, early in the morning, verse 12, let's turn our Bibles again, verse 12. Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel, that he has set up a monument in his own honor, and has turned and gone down to Gilgal. Okay? So, if you will stop here, what do you think did Saul do? Anyone? Did, did, did he 
Thanks. Any, any volunteers? What did he just do? He set up a monument. So, pagka gumawa ka ng monument, ano, what are you trying to prove? No? You wanna get the glory. And I am the great leader who gave this victory. Again, did Saul really have the right relationship with the Lord? Because if we walk with the Lord, we know that it is not us who gave us the victory. We are just a vessel for the Lord. But since it is just always a religion, and that is what usually happens in our society when we see around the people around us, they give, they give money. In fact, some of those money mga came from dirty money. And yet, they would do this, those stuff for what? So that they can flaunt their goodness. And this is what exactly was Saul doing. He was flaunting, I am the great guy who gave this victory. And what happened? Let's read verse 13. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instruction. Okay. So in, in layman's term, parang sinabi niya, Samuel, ha? Ginawa ko yung kumat ni God, ha? Oh. So, he was even proud of what he did. But, was the Lord pleased? Let's read verse 14. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Okay? Bakit sinabi ni Saul to? Eh, ni Samuel to kay Saul. Eh, ni naririnig ko. Ano yung um, kambing na ano ba? Repeating. Niyak. Okay? I think one of the reasons why Samuel was mentioning this is because perhaps he was giving Saul a chance to confess his sin. It's kind of nanang kwe kyo tsui tao jia kwe yao tsui tsui ya. Kita na eh, may chocolate na sasabihin. Oh, wala, wala, wala. Diba? He was giving him chance to repent. But yet, talagang matiga sa ulo ni Saul. Why? Because really, in contrast with David and Saul, if you would look at the life of David, was David perfect? Hindi, di ba? What did he do? He was just falling into the sin of uh, adultery with Bathsheba. Hindi lang yun. Pinatay pa niya yung mister niya. And the same manner, God sent Prophet Nathan to rebuke David. And what did David do? Did David say, eh, hindi ko makin, hindi ko alam eh, bigla na lang magbukas ko ng pinto. Nakita ko mayroong naliligong babae, hindi ko kasalanan yun. Did, was he able to justify his sin? I don't think so. But he was able to repent. But Saul, tingnan mo si Saul, nagpalusot pa. Anong justification niya? Let's read verse 15. Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. It's like saying, Lord, eh, someone, hindi naman ako may kasalanan yun. Yung mga, yung mga soldiers brought them. Sila yung may kasalanan yun. Sila yung nag-spared the best. Pero actually, we really killed everything. So, ano na yung sagot ni ni Samuel? Verse 16. Stop! Kumitil ka na. Sa presinto ka na magpaliwanag. Papalusog ka ba eh? Samuel said to Saul, Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me. Namun pa niya. Sabi niya. Tell me. Saul replied. Okay. So, verse 17. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and He sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy these wicked people, the Amalekites, and make war on them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? And why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? It's like God saying, Did you remember Sinoka before? And how did I raise you up to where you are right now? 
It is as if parang tayo, when we were walking with the Lord now, and when we look at ourselves in the past, probably we were experiencing blessing because you have somehow gained the Lord's favor. But there will be time that we have to remember ano ba yung ginawa ni Lord sa atin for us to be reminded not to be proud and not to forget Him. Because somehow, ang problem na sa atin, when things are going good, we forget about the relationship. Diba? Para lang yan, I believe there will be some here who would understand that, no? Na nagkaroon ng relationship. Diba? Porkit nasagot na, yung is sweet. Diba? Parang ganun yan eh. So sometimes, yung relationship kailangan ni-renew. Diba? So here, what we're trying to say is, God has to remind us, bine-bless kita, because we were once walking, no? and you are following me. Did you remember sa ka dati, and how I have carried you? It is parang ganun eh. Diba? Was Samuel uh, the greatest among his people? I don't think so. When God was mentioning to Saul where he was, saan bang tribe siya? Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And did you know, as a background, if you will read the previous chapter, ano ba ang tribe of Benjamin? Muntik nang mawala sa, sa history yung tribe ng Benjamin. Because there was a point na we almost wipe out ng buong Israel yung tribe of Benjamin. Merong away kasi na nangyari. And God was just telling him, you were from the least of your tribe. But God was able to raise him up, even if he was so badly to give him this privilege. Parang tayo rin. I don't even look at myself as privileged to share to you this word of God, to, to, to mentor and preach the word of God, but it is a privilege. So, it is for us to remember not to be too focused on a religion. Because the problem is, once we start focusing on a religion, we would think, aha, I am doing this already for the Lord. I must be something, someone. Diba? And it would lead us astray from our focus on the Lord, sa obedience, and we would look highly of ourselves and give the glory rather than give the glory to God. Okay? So, in short, pinabibigyan ni Lord ng chance si Saul na mag-repenta, no? Verse 20. So, Twice na, binigyan ng opportunity ni God si Samuel to repent. Nakinig ba siya? Binibigyan na niya ng chance na mag-say sorry, you know? Verse 20, did he did? Did he do so? Verse 20, but, 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 but I did obey the Lord. So he said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agat their king. The soldiers took the sheep and the cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Hindi naman ako eh. Yung mga soldiers, at alam mo ba, Lord, kung sa sacrifice sila, hindi naman siguro masama yung ginawa namin. At panuso pa. Okay, verse 22. But Samuel replied, yun yung key verse natin. Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as obeying the voice of the Lord. To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like a sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected your king. Take note mo, sabi niya, rebellion, yung pag-disobey, matindi pala yung pag hindi ka pala sumusulod kay God. Ano raw siya? It is at amount to witchcraft divination. Para ka na rin nag-witchcraft kung hindi ka sumusunod. Okay? So, pati hindi pala, no? pag hindi sumunod. And what is the arrogance? Pag mayabang ka, it's like worshiping idols now. Idolatry. Okay? So, bakit minention ni, ni Samuel to kay Saul? Saul, Samuel has to remind Saul na hindi dahil you are sacrificing for God, you are doing something for God, that does make you good in the eyes of God. It's not about that. It's like, ano bang relationship, di ba? We've talked to you before. When we read the Bible, 
We look at the principle, we apply it in the present time. And how can we apply it at present? Sometimes, ganun din tayo. We, we say as if, Lord, siguro naman nag-a-asher ako sa church. Ma-attend naman ako ng DFF. Okay naman ako, di ba, Lord? And what, this, what does God will tell you? To obey is better than sacrifice. So, when, 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 when the Lord was telling us those words, it is as if Jesus Christ was telling to uh, Martha when He was mentioning to Mary, hindi ko niya require yung mga ginagawa mo para sa akin. When God told uh, Martha what to do, ano ba ang sinasabi niya? There, parang yung kanta natin kanina yan. Eh. There is only one thing that I needed of you. And what is that? To seek the Lord. Gusto ko, pakinggan mo ko. Hindi ko kailangan yung mga binibigay mo sa akin. That should be an outflow of your love for me. Hindi ko kailangan yung mga bagay. Mas gusto ko pa that you come to me with a repentant heart, obedient heart, spend time with me, listen to my words, read my word, pray, spend time with me. Yan ang kailangan ko. And most of us would fail on this area. Just because we are active in ministry work, just because we're doing, uh, sharing the gospel to our friends, that doesn't make us right in the eyes of God. Ano ba ang requirement sa atin ni God when we accepted Christ? Ano ang goal natin? Ano ang goal natin? Yeah, great commission is part of the outflow for love. But ang desire natin is really to get to know God. Diba? It is for us to get to know Him. It is like a relationship. Diba? I'm sure some of us are also um, longing to have a special partner someday. And you know that the relationship that we experience is like a gift that God gave us. Because ang aso wala namang asawa eh. Diba? Ang halaman, meron bang partner? Wala, di ba? But God has to allow us to experience relationship so that we can understand yung relationship na gusto rin niya sa atin. Di ba? Pag tayo nga, hindi nga natin nakakawis ang yung girlfriend na. Di ba? Ganun din. How is it that when we fail to read the Bible and spend time with God, hindi man lang nga tayo na yan. Di ba? Hindi man lang natin na miss. So, this is what the Lord would try to tell us. Hindi ko kailangan yan. It is as if, parang may mag-asawa kayo, binibigay ko naman yung pera mo pang shopping mo. Ah. Diba? Ano sasabihin ng misis sa Mr. Hindi ko kailangan yan. Kailangan ko ito. Oh. Cheesy. But that is very good relationship. Diba? Hits us to the bones. That is what the Lord really means. Okay? Okay. So, let's see. Verse 24. Makitinding salita ang sinabi ni Samuel kay Saul. So, tinamaan nga ba si Saul? Let's read verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I have violated the Lord's command and your instruction. I was afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. Pala eh. Kumamin ka rin sa wakas. Sabi niya, natakot kasi ako sa tao. Baka anong sabihin nila? Baka sabihin nila, hindi ako nakikinig sa kanila. And what can we learn from the previous session that we have? Ba? In the workplace topic natin, people pleasing, you remember? So there will be times, masusubukan rin tayo. But the question is, who do we want to obey? Do we want to obey the pleasing other people or do we want just to please the Lord? And we will be faced with that circumstances. And continue. Uh, now, verse 25, I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Wow. Kaya tang totoo ba talagang nag-repent si Samuel dito? Eh, si Saul dito? Sabi niya, balik ka na sa akin. Sabi niya, tawarin mo na ako so that we can worship the Lord together. Okay? Ang tanong, did Saul really repented? 
Pinagtanong. Kasi si God, very forgiving eh, di ba? Ang tanong, God, would we really know kung talagang repentant tayo dito sa Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart. But, tingnan mo dito, But someone said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. And eventually, tuloy-tuloy, uh, as someone turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and he tore. And someone said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it in, to one of your brothers to one better than you. God knows that He is not really repentant. And makikita natin bakit siya hindi talaga repentant. And why is it na siningit pa niya, samahan mo ako. Diba? In fact, kung talagang forgiving ka naman, He could just have asked for forgiveness. Sir. But you see, now I saw the reason why bakit gusto ni Samuel and his soul yung favor ni Samuel kaya siya nagsisay sorry. Bakit? It is because si Samuel at that time was their spiritual leader. It's like as if parang malakas ang cloud niya. Parang sample ko lang ang cardinal seed. Parang ganun. That, ang time na yun. Malaki ang cloud. So, for, for a political leader to lose the, the blessing of a spiritual leader is tough. You agree? So, Now I understand, hindi pala siya talaga repentant. Ano lang ang gusto niya? Gusto lang pala niya is the favor. Kasi if he wins the favor of Samuel, then somehow, parang hawak pa rin niya yung mga tao. So balik tayo sa sin pala talaga ni Saul. And ever since you will see this over and over, na Saul was always a people pleaser. Because he never really intended to repent. But rather, he just wants to be good in the eyes of the people. And look at what and look at what Samuel said. So Israel does not lie or change his mind. For he is not a man that he should change his mind. Okay? Who is the glory of Israel? Samuel was referring to God. And what a comforting word we can learn here. Um, Samuel just mentioned, you know, so, si God, hindi kagaya ng tao, he doesn't change his mind. And he does not lie or change his mind kahit hindi siya tao. And he cannot change his mind because he is God and he is holy. Okay? So, ako, as an encouragement, this is an encouragement to all of us because um, sometimes we think that God is a fickle-minded God. We can control God by just our action. But God sees our heart. Alam niya kung talagang your, your heart is truly for Him. Kaya nga, when I ask you, do you really have a religion or a relationship, God sees it. And you cannot fool God. And He's not like a man na pwede niyo laruin. Pagmabait ka, magiging maayos. Diba? And you, can talk, you think you can win the favor of God. That is an encouraging words also to us as Christians. For those who obey God, and if we have the right relationship with God, the challenge is, kung because when He says His promise, He shall surely deliver. Because He is not like a man, that He will change His mind. No? What the comforting words that we can have here. And verse 30, we can read here, So replied, I have sinned. Ito na, kita na natin yung rason. Please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel and come back to me so that I may worship the Lord your God. Okay? So, did, was Samuel truly, ay, was Saul really repentant? Was Saul really repentant? Hindi. Why? What's, what's, what's the big, what's, what can you see here that tells us that he was not truly repentant? John. No? Okay, pwede. But, you'll you see here, basahin natin ha. Please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Imagine mo, may kasalanan ka na. Parang kumbaga, 
Kumamit ka na ng, kumamit ka na ng kasalanan ko, Mare, I am sorry. Kasalanan ka na. Mare, Darcy, nahuli ka na. Tapos sasabihin mo, purihin mo ako sa harap ng tao. Is it really repentant? I don't think so. Di ba? Pagkita ka na, what is the right thing to do? You say sorry, you admit you're wrong. You don't even have to be honored. You don't even demand to be honored. Because nagkasalanan ka eh. But he was really not after the repentance, but more of the praise of the people, the praise of the people. That's why he has to say these words. Okay? So I hope, um, hindi tayo ganun. God will send us people in our midst. God will send us spiritual leaders to remind us, Bro, sister, the Lord might be telling you something. You should take your relationship with the Lord seriously. Hindi po pwede yung uh, buffet Christian na pipiliin mo. Obedience is, is totally a commitment to the Lord. Pero pag, if you continue to push away these instructions, this leading, eventually, I, I don't know if you've been reading about the scripture, some words that you will see is the word hardened heart. Naririnig nyo ba yung word na yun? If you will continuously deny the counsel of the godly people that God will surround you, o kaya yung prompting ng Holy Spirit, eventually yan ang mangyayari sa atin. Hardened heart. At yan yung nangyari kay Saul. Eventually, binigyan pa ba ng chance ni God si Saul? Wala na. Nayaan na niya. Do you know, after this chapter 15, 16 onwards, tanggal ng Holy Spirit sa kanya and God has given him to Satan. What happened? There was a tormenting spirit that came already to Saul. Kaya medyo nagwawala na. Parang mentally unstable na si Saul. Why? Kinayaan na ni God si Saul. Eh, bakit? Because he was really hardening his heart. Binibigyan na ng chance na mag-repent. Ayaw niya makinig. And that also can happen to us. Romans 1 verse 21. Can we, can we turn our Bibles to Romans 1 verse 21? 21. Let's read this together. For although, let's read this together. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they become fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images, and so on and so forth make like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. And uh, let's read uh, verse 28 to 32. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. Okay? What can we learn here? Sometimes, we, we know God's word. But the problem is there will be times if we continuously harden their hearts, our hearts, and we, we totally go away from God. Our minds can eventually be darkened. And as that happens, malululong tayo na malululong na parang kumunoy pababa. And yun ang gusto ni Satan. And he would quote lies. Huwag ka nang pumunta kay Lord you're not worthy. And that is the problem. The more farther you go, mas mahirap na. And perhaps, if we really do not listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, then eventually, you might just be hardening your hearts and eventually, wala ka ng hope, just like how Saul was. Okay? I mean, Agag, king of the Amalekites, Agag came to him confidently, thinking, surely the bitterness of death is past. So, sabi ni King Ahab, Agab, baka siguro makakakakas na ako. Okay? But Samuel said, As your sword has made woman childless, so will your mother be childless among women. And Samuel put Agab to death before the Lord and killed God. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibea of Saul. Until that day, Samuel died. He did not go to see Saul again. Though Samuel mourned for him, the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. 
Okay? What can we learn here? Okay? We've just finished yung whole chapter 15, no? Actually, ako, medyo makikita, nakikita ko yung contrast ni Samuel at ni Saul. Imagine mo si Samuel, spiritual leader. And do you think it is comfortable with him na nasa church ka to actually do and kill someone? Hindi naman siya warrior, di ba? Hindi naman siya general, di ba? Ano ba ang trabaho niya? Mag-alay sa Diyos, mag-worship sa temple. But actually, it is a command given by God to kill King Agag. Right? Because, bakit? It is to bring justice. Kasi, the time is up. Gusto na ni Lord i-annihilate lahat. Pero in-spare his soul. And what did uh, Samuel do? He actually just killed King Agag. So, if you would look at this, minsan uncomfortable yung situation. But tingnan mo yung heart ni Samuel. He was obedient. He did what the Lord asked to do. And not only that, he doesn't matter whether pangit, ano ba yan, magmumuka ako violent leader. Imagine mo, let's say si Raymond, sasaksak, di ba? It's gruesome, di ba? But what is the heart of Samuel? Eh so what kung magmuka akong tanga? Eh so what kung magmuka akong violent sa harap ng tao? I don't mind. Because it is the Lord whom I follow. So I hope we can learn a lesson from the life of how Samuel obeyed in contrast with his soul. Ito ang application natin. Obey God if, even if it would cost us. Okay? Don't have a religion, rather have a relationship with God. Because religion will only just make us, you know, do this. Parang when we do things, parang obligat. Obligat. Hindi ka masaya, but rather, gusto mo lang gawin yun so that you think you can give God's favor. But the relationship is different. The relationship is allowing us to understand ano ba yung gusto ni God. And God wants us to submit our lives to Him. He wants us to know Him so that eventually we can become a blessing to others out of the flow of love that we have for God. And second, we can learn from this evening is about repentance and humbleness. Okay? When we are rebuked of sin, do not justify. Otherwise, God would allow our hearts to be hardened and left with the depraved minds, just as what we read kanina. So, I, I, I know some of us might have been asking, or might have been questioning ourselves, you will be thinking, so I don't even really know if I really have the right relationship with God. Siguro, for the past few years, I'm just here because I felt it is because sa company, kaya ako ma-attend lang. But I really cannot understand what you mean when you mention, I want to know God. I'm giving you this chance right now. Can we all close our eyes? I'm giving you this privilege, no? You know, when Jesus said, that He came on earth to die for our sins. It is because He loved us so much na ayaw niyang mawalay sa paningin niya. And that's why He wants us to be back and restored with the relationship. And that's why He's offering this um, um, call to us to have this relationship. And if any one of you haven't committed their life to Christ and have this relationship, I am telling each one for this evening, now is your chance, no? Um, for anyone who would want to really experience this real relationship, you can just pray the simple prayer like this. Okay? You can follow after me. Dear God, Heavenly Father, I know I might have a religion. I know who you, I know the Bible, perhaps, or I might be attending church, Lord, but I really do not know you. I don't enjoy yet obeying you. But Lord, from this evening, I understand that you are calling us to have the right kind of relationship. And we pray, I pray, Lord, that from this day on, I'm surrendering my life to you. And I want my life to be a 
pleasing aroma for you. Let my life be the sacrifice that you want for this evening, Lord. It's not about what I do, Lord, but it's about what you've done on the cross that I am saved. Thank you for this privilege. Allow me to experience you, Lord. I want to know you. Please, I ask in Christ's name.